video is on naming acids and bases. So this unit is on acids and bases, and in order to talk about them and know what I'm talking about and what you're talking about, we need to know how we can name them, um, both our acids and our bases. So bases, you already know how to, how to name. Um, a base is something that ends in hydroxide, or OH, and so this is our OH, our hydroxide ion. So an example is NaOH, you know that's just sodium hydroxide. Um, all bases end in hydroxide except for ammonia. Ammonia is NH3, and you've seen this a couple of times. Um, you just might not have realized that that's a base. Um, its counterpart is ammonium, NH4+, and that's actually, we use it as a, a weak acid. And we'll talk about that more later. But we need to know how to name our acids. They're the ones that are a little tricky. They have a formula we need to follow. We have our ion ending, and with that ion ending, we get our acid name from that, and our acid names all have endings based on their ion ending. And so we look at the anions because all of our acids are going to have H for hydrogen in front of them. That must, makes it an acid. Then we look at uh, what anion it's paired with and then depending on how we name that anion, that's how we'll name our acid. So an example of an ion that ends in IDE would be chloride. So that's Cl minus. Your chloride ion is going to turn into hydrochloric acid. So you'd write that as hydrochloric with the IC ending, which is HCl. Then we can have an 8 ending. Your 8 ending, an example of that would be sulfate, that's SO4, minus 2. So sulfate, that ending is going to make the ick ending on my acid, so it's going to be sulfuric acid, and notice that my acids all end in acid. A way to remember this is if you ate acid, it would be icky, I see. Kind of a funny way to remember it. Then we have our ite ending. An example of an ite ending is nitrite, which is NO2, which is minus 1. So nitrite, if that was our ending, we'd have nitrous acid with an OUS ending. Okay, so let's go through a couple examples. If I have HCl, well, I look at my ion, which is my Cl, my chloride. Now, chloride is my ending. So I go to my chart, chloride is going to be a hypo with an ic ending. And notice that my chloride ending does not have any oxygens. So here we have no oxygens. Whereas my other ones, they have oxygen. My eights and my ites will have oxygen because they are formed with polyatomic ions. So back here I have HCl, which is chloride. So that's going to get into my hydro, prefix hydro with my ic ending. So I have hydro, chlor, ic acid with my ic ending and my hydro prefix. My next one, I have chlorate, ClO3, that's my 8 ending. So if I have an 8 ending, if I ate an acid, it'd be icky. So I have chlor, ic acid. My next one, I have chlorite, ClO2, that has my ITE ending. That means my ITE ending is going to go to us. So I have chlorous acid. Then finally, I have hypochlorite here. My hypochlorite ion is going to end again with that IT ending. That's all that matters is my ending of my acid. So because that one ends in that ITE ending, I'm going to have an OUS acid. So again, I'm going to have, in this case, I have hypochlorite, hypochlor, and then my ending now is that O-U-S because of my ite ending. So I have hypochlorous acid. So you can see from here, my I ending, my first one, gave me hydrochloric acid. My 8 ending gave me chloric acid, 
My it ending gave me chlorous acid. And again, even though it says hypochlorite, I still get hypochlorous acid. So it's just my ending that, dep that tells me what kind of acid name I will have. So what if we go the other directions? We want to write formulas from acids. So I tell you that you have um, hydrobromic acid. It reacts with sodium hydroxide. What is it going to make? Well, you need to know how to write hydrobromic acid in order to write out your chemical reaction. Well, we remember that all acids have a hydrogen on front. We call it the acidic proton. It's the proton that gets pulled off. Remember that a proton is the equivalent of a hydrogen ion. And then my overall charge of a compound is going to be zero, which is why we do the crisscross method. So that means my overall charge is going to cancel themselves out. So if I have something like hydrobromic acid, I look, my ending is IC, which means I have to have bromide as my ion. Bromide has a negative one charge. I want to make it an acid, so I need to add a hydrogen. Well, my hydrogen has a plus one charge, and I can either crisscross them down, or I can see that my negative one charge on my bromine cancels out with my negative one charge on my hydrogen. So I get HBr. Then for my second one, I have sulfuric acid. My ic ending tells me that I had to have an eight ion. Sulfate is my ion, which is SO4 minus two. If this is a minus 2, I have to add my hydrogens to make it an acid. So I put my hydrogen here. Hydrogen has a plus 1 charge, so I need two hydrogens with each of the plus 1 charge to cancel out my negative 2 charge. So you have H2SO4. So its overall charge is 0. Two positives and two negatives. Next, I have phosphorus acid. Phosphorus comes from phosphite. And we look on our chart, we notice that phosphite isn't one of our options. But you remember from doing polyatomic ions that going from phosphate to phosphite is just like going from chlorate to chlorite, and you just drop an oxygen. So phosphite is going to be PO3, still with that negative 3 charge, which means my hydrogen in front to make it an acid, I'm going to have three hydrogens to balance out that negative three charge. So you have H3PO3. So go ahead and do these three examples. And I'll go over them in just a second. For the first one, you should have seen that it has that ic ending. So that means I had to have sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2. So I need to have two hydrogens in front, so I need to have H2SO4. My next one, phosphoric acid, means I had phosphate. I look to find phosphate, and that is PO4 minus 3, which means I need to have three hydrogens in front to balance out that charge, so I have h 3PO4. My next one, chromic acid. Again, that ic ending means I had to have an 8 ion. If I ate an acid, it'd be icky. So I have chromate. Remember that chromate is CrO4 minus 2. That means I need to have two hydrogens on front. And then sulfurous acid means I need to use sulfite, which is SO3 minus 2, one less than sulfate. So I need two hydrogens on front of that, so again I have H2SO3, well sulfur sulfurous acid. So next what you're going to do is practice what you have here, and you should have a practice worksheet right after these notes, and we'll go over any questions you have on that tomorrow in class.